Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome to my channel. The day has finally come, the exciting day where I'm going to start working on my Connie Lowe BJD doll. Um, so just to give you guys a, a few thoughts about this doll, this is the largest doll of this type that I've ever had. So um, dealing with the logistics of such a large doll um, is sort of my first issue. The other issue is painting her. So if you're not familiar with what a BJD doll is, it stands for ball jointed doll. And they have all kinds of articulations that as you can see inside there are string jointed. The string jointing of the ball jointed doll makes me very nervous <laughs> because um, if the string breaks or wears out, you have to restring the doll. And basically there are uh, strings running all through the doll that are sort of secured in the head. And we're gonna look inside her head. Um, and so I really get nervous about taking them apart because I've never restrung one myself. It makes me really nervous to do so. Um, her head for me is a little bit hard to get off. I'm sure there's some kind of trick that I don't know about. And I'm trying really hard not to touch her face too much because I've washed it already. And I will explain that in a minute. Um, so basically working with these dolls is just very new to me. And um, so I just popped it off with with this and it came off really easily. So this is the inside of the head. You can see here, this is the ring that's holding all the strings together inside her body. And as you move the doll, um, they sort of get all twisted up. Um, so anyway, painting this type of doll basically means you're going to be painting the entire doll at the same time. It's not like Blythe where you're taking off the head um, and doing the painting and then putting the doll back together. For the BJD, for the most part, and, and I don't know, maybe there are BJD artists that do unstring the doll to paint it, but because I'm very nervous about restringing her, I'm going to be painting her as she is put together. Um, so because of that, I will be spraying her with Mr. Super Clear. And when you do that, um, you don't want to get the Mr. Super Clear so much in the joints. At least this is what I've heard. Again, this is my first time doing this, so I'm sure if those watching the video have done this before, you might have better suggestions. But my understanding is if you build up too much Mr. Super Clear in the joints, when the joints bend, the Mr. Super Clear um, can crack or sort of um, come off, basically, which makes sense. If you're putting a sealer over it and then you move it around, it's, it's going to break the seal. So normally, if I'm gonna put some color on a body, like a Blythe body, I will cover all the pieces that I don't want the Mr. Super Clear on for example and only spray the hands but this doll in particular has a breastbone area that is typically painted um, the fingers and sort of elbows and knees are always painted and I'm trying to kind of make her similar to the way that Connie would paint her dolls I'm not going to do my own sort of style I really want it to look like a Connie doll so I've been looking at pictures and I'll put some up here in the video of Connie's dolls as well as specifically this doll which is Alice and kind of wanting to make her similar when it comes to painting so Connie does real sort of dark around the nose and the mouth um, and the eyes and I really like that look also but also in the fingers um, so this is going to be a, a new adventure for me and when I spray her I'm going to be spraying the entire surface that you can see. I have covered just the torso. I figure even if most people don't do that, it will be fine for my doll because my dolls are never naked. So um, those areas should always be covered on her. 
but before I spray her and start the coloring I have washed with dish soap all of the parts that are going to have color and the reason I do that is because with handling the doll um, yourself or it, like this doll traveled with me from Seattle she hasn't been washed at all um, oils from your skin can get onto the material and when you spray Mr. Super Clear on it can prevent it from adhering very well and working very well so I had to kind of take her in the bathroom and wash her different parts but carefully as well because you have those strings inside her body and you really don't want water in there um, causing mold or causing rust on the ring so I don't recommend um, getting your doll wet very often or washing her with water uh, basically ever except this first time when you're getting ready to paint her so she's been sitting here drying um, I was very careful not to saturate her just kind of wash the best that I can the other reason why I was sort of waiting until this point is I have a hard time painting dolls if I don't have eyes for them to kind of get an idea of what they're looking like and I was looking around for BJD eyes and I found some great sellers but they were the eyes were kind of expensive and because I didn't really know what size I was getting I did not want to spend $20 to just try eyes so I checked with an old um, reborn company that I used to buy supplies from called Bountiful Baby I'll put a link below and they have some really gorgeous glass eyes that are really inexpensive so I ordered two pairs I really like dolls with dark eyes so I got a pair of dark brown and then I got this pair that probably is a little bit hard to see but they're like a bluish um, with some purple in them and I thought they would look really really good with the wig that I have for her so I just ordered both pairs and it turns out I do really like these so with BJD's the eye um, goes in through the back and then you will secure it there with some putty so the eyes are removable you can always do a different pair so I really think I'll go with these ones you don't want to put the eyes in until your painting is done but a lot of times what I do is as I'm painting when I'm trying to decide how that's going or if the look I want is being achieved I'll sometimes put the eyes in to see how it looks so that's kind of where I'm at um, I'm gonna take her outside right now I also had to kind of set up more of an area for such a large doll to spray because normally I just have a face plate to spray and she's quite large so I'm gonna lay her out um, side and get her sprayed once with a really good coat of Mr. Super Clear I'm not really sure how to go about doing both sides of her body. I don't think I'm gonna spray her backside. I don't know if that's gonna work well or not, um, but I'm gonna have her hands facing up like this. And so we'll see, I might have to turn her over and spray the other side, maybe paint the first side and then the other, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. So let's get her sprayed. Um, once she's dried with her first coat of Mr. Super Clear, we will start coloring her and I'll bring her in and show you that process. All right, so here we are. She's been sprayed with one good coat of Mr. Super Clear. Um, I found her card while I was preparing everything. And so this is kind of the look I'm going for. This doll in the photo is, I'm assuming, painted by Connie. Um, this was sort of the promotional photo for this doll. So you can see she's got really dark around the nose and mouth and the eyes. So we're gonna be using a lot of dark colors. Um, same with in the little um, neck area, the clavicle. So let's get started. It's probably gonna take a few layers to build up that color. So we'll, I probably won't talk so much. We'll just kind of start. Um, the hard part again is gonna be because she's so large I can't move it around like a tiny piece. So I'm hoping you'll be able to see pretty well what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to get my colors here. I have my brushes and sort of the palette that I scrape the colors onto. Um, so I hope you enjoy watching and I will check back in when we're ready to do another layer.
layer. Uh, it's not really getting dark outside, but for some reason, as the sun shifts through my apartment at this time of day, it's just kind of dark here at my table. So I've turned on my light, which never looks great on the video, but if not, I am not able to see what I'm doing. So let's work on her second layer and we'll spray her again and see where we're at. I've done two layers now and I'm working on the third. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the majority of her coloring. I'm done with the hands and the feet and the arms and legs. I'm not gonna do any more there. The only thing that I'm having kind of an issue with is the color doesn't seem to be blending quite like it does on a Blythol. This material is different, it's a resin. And I don't think I've ever painted a resin, or maybe I did one small doll once, but nothing this large. And so I feel like the color, at least this, this dark color, isn't blending super well. So I don't love it, but I put the eyes in. I kind of hold the eyes up, and I do like the way she's looking. And she does seem to look very close to the way that the artist doll looks. So I think maybe I'm getting close. It's just a matter of putting her together and, and she'll be fine. So I'm gonna add some eyelashes and some eyebrows. And that might also help. Here's the original picture again. So I'm gonna do some lashes over here and some brows like that in a dark brown and we'll see how that looks. And then we might have to do one more layer with the dark around the eyes for that to kind of blend right. Otherwise we are almost done.
All right, so I don't know how well you can see with the lighting being kind of bad. So let me, I'm gonna go and spray her again. And we might do one more layer around the eyes and then I think she will be done. I did order an outfit for her. It's not here yet. So I think part two of this video will be dressing her. And this first part will at least get her finished on her painting. So let's spray her one more time. All right, so here she is all painted. I always do my last layer of Mr. Super Clear in semi-gloss, so you can see there's a little bit of shine to her face. Um, I still have my light on and it's making it a little bit hard to see her. So I'm going to go ahead and get her dress in what I have for her, get her plastic off and her eyes put in, and then I'll try to get a better photo so you can see her face a little bit better so let's take this off and um, let's get her eyes put in so the hard part is getting the eyes set where you want them you can kind of move them around once they're in there and you have put the putty kind of on the back I didn't have any of the really good putty this is like sticky tack that I'm gonna try to use because I couldn't find any of the good putty and I don't know how well this is going to stick. It doesn't even feel like it's sticking at all. So I might have to look around and see if I have any putty. I'm not quite sure what it is that people use, but it feels sort of like Sculpey clay. So let me go look and see if I have any in a different drawer. So I found a little bit that I had for something else. So I'm hoping this will be enough and I'm gonna have to find some more in the future so basically you're just going to put the eye in and use the sticky around it to hold the eye in place that's kind of the way it's done but i'm not sure that i have enough of this stuff to make them stay so let's see i guess it's not really sticking much better than the other stuff so maybe it will work I would love any suggestions from BJD artists about getting the eyes in more easily. Let me grab some more sticky stuff. I was able to find some Sculpey clay and I think that that's going to work. I'm hoping that that's not going to hurt the resin in any way. But it seems to be the only thing that's working to hold it in and not stick to me as I'm trying to keep the eye in. So. So I think that that's pretty good. All right, so we've got the eyes in. Now we can put the back of her head on. have it upside down Just this way there we go and I brought the one little part of an of the outfit I have for her and so we're gonna put that back on it's kind of like underwear and I think it'll look cute for now just have something on I don't really like having naked dolls the outfit that I ordered from her I'll put a link to the shop um, it's my friend Carla she made a custom dress for me and I'm probably gonna get some other accessories for her as well like a sweater I'm thinking I really want her to kind of look like a ragamuffin so we'll see and then I brought her wig and what I do for wigs is put these little Velcro dots 
on the head and on the wig and then that way the wig will stay on better. This wig stays on pretty well, um, but it also comes off with too much messing around. So I don't want, I want it to be, oh, and we lost an eye. So let's open her back up. Okay. These dots are nice because they come off, they don't really leave any problems. So they're pretty safe to use in my experience. And then, so you put one on the head and then one on the wig, but you do have to know exactly where you want it to land first, so. doesn't stay on super well, so I think we're going to put one on the back too. So there we have her, her eyes are in, her wig is on, and I'll try to get a photo so you can see better what she looks like. The next video from her will be when her outfit arrives um, and we'll get her dress. So I hope you enjoyed watching me paint her and I hope you'll enjoy seeing more of her very soon. Bye bye.